In the rich philosophy of the Hermetic tradition, the sun is esteemed as a profound symbol encapsulating a distinct aspect of consciousness, notably characterized by its dynamic, radiating essence. This celestial body stands as a paragon of generosity, ceaselessly projecting powerful beams of light and warmth. It embodies an inherent inability to receive or take, as such acts are contrary to its fundamental nature. The sun thus exemplifies one half of the duality inherent in existence, assuming the role of the active or masculine polarity within this metaphysical framework. Mirroring this, the moon is revered as an emblem of the feminine, encapsulating the receptive and intuitive dimensions of the unconscious mind. The moon, in her intrinsic nature, is veiled in darkness and an enigmatic coolness, personifying a passive polarity that forms a stark contrast to the sun's vibrant and assertive demeanor. In the realm of alchemical symbolism, the moon's character is likened to a nurturing force, drawing inward and cultivating introspection, while the sun is associated with an outward flow of energy and a spirit of expansiveness. This cosmic dance between the sun and moon unveils a profound interplay within the Hermetic tradition. The sun, as a representation of conscious awareness, finds a mirror for its essence in the luminous reflection of the moon. Conversely, the moon's inherent darkness, a metaphor for the uncharted territories of the unconscious, is bathed and brought into relief by the nurturing glow of the sun's light. This interplay highlights a fundamental hermetic principle, the harmonious balance and unity between the active and passive forces that shape our understanding of the self and the universe. As Fulcanelli states, the moon secretly absorbs the rays of the sun and nurtures them in her bosom. In the realm of metaphysics, meditation is often likened to a profound and intricate process governed by principles that mirror celestial phenomena. At the forefront of this process is the conscious mind, which plays a role akin to that of the sun. It illuminates and directs our thoughts and focus, casting light on the paths we choose to explore. In contrast, the unconscious aspect of our psyche, comparable to the moon, operates on a more enigmatic and lunar level. This unconscious realm harbors psychic energies which are subtly ignited by the radiant essence of our conscious thoughts, much like the moonlight is a reflection of the sun's brilliance. Philosophers often describe this interaction using the metaphor of consciousness inseminating the unconscious. This dynamic interaction gives rise to a new dimension of consciousness within us, a luminous and subjective self which can be thought of as the inner divine or the hermetic child. This emergent aspect of our being is known by various alchemical terms, each rich in symbolism and meaning. It is referred to as the stone, the philosopher's gold, the filius philosophorum, the infant solaris, the red tincture, or the sun-moon child among others. These names convey the transformative and precious nature of this inner awakening. During meditation, practitioners delve into the fertile realms of the feminine unconscious. This journey symbolizes the birthing process of the inner divine child, an emblem of the emergence of the inner self. This process requires the practitioner to exert conscious effort, willpower, and focused concentration upon the passive yet potent energies of the unconscious. In response, the unconscious nurtures and matures this divine solar seed, often referred to as our gold by alchemists. In this context, the feminine aspect of our psyche assumes the role of the mother of divinity, fostering the growth of the son of the sun. This mystical union, where the male and female essences coalesce, is the genesis of the Philosopher's Stone. In this union, the sun and the moon, symbolizing the father and mother, 
recognize their reflection in the divine offspring. This represents not just a union, but a true marital communion, echoing the unification of Adam and Eve and symbolizing the mystical wedding celebrated in alchemical traditions. Observing the sun through the lens of the lunar astral light, especially when it is in its full and bountiful state, is a transformative experience. Alchemists held this sight in high esteem, often expressing its beauty through allegories such as the Lily of the Valley and the White Rose, which represent the whitening stage of alchemical transformation. This phenomenon symbolizes the purification and spiritual awakening that occurs within, epitomized by the beautiful body of Diana, free from all earthly ties. Consequently, the sun's counterpart, the moon, becomes the mother of our spiritual rebirth. Through this process, our consciousness becomes acutely self-aware and we awaken to a greater light emanating from within, a light that has its origins in the sun, our father. Yet the moon representing our mother with her nurturing and fertile qualities remains an integral part of this journey. This rich tapestry of symbolism finds echoes in various mythologies and religious narratives, such as the Osirian myth of Isis, the Virgin Mother, who birthed Horus and the Christian mystery of the Holy Virgin Mother, conceived by the Father and giving birth to the Divine Child. These narratives mirror our own inner journey towards a regenerated soul and an exalted consciousness. In images depicting the culmination of the alchemical wedding, the focus is initially on the center, where two opposite but complementary forces of nature, the feminine and masculine energies, are united in the alchemical marriage. This represents the Eros Gamos, or the holy marriage of our inner archetypal divine couple, symbolizing the alchemical king and queen. Their offspring becomes the alchemical hermetic child, a symbol of our rebirth into a new and higher spirituality. This marriage is blessed and sanctified by the Holy Spirit, represented by the descending dove, acting as the mediator between heaven and earth. The entire scene is divided into two equal parts, representing aspects of consciousness. Two luminaries dominate this scene, the sun, ruling the day as the radiant conscious aspect of our beings, and the moon, ruling the night as the reflective and nurturing unconscious. Beginning from the left side, in the depths of darkness, in a distant town, an alchemist keeps his vigil. Even in his sleep, he tends to his fire and maintains the light, for alchemists are always awake. This suggests that the alchemical wedding is an inward experience to be realized through spiritual practice, meditation, aspiration and love for the divine within us. As we explore the scenery, we pass by Diana's temple, recognizing her as our beautiful queen and goddess. Her purity and chastity are symbolized by the unicorn, the single-horned white horse. This creature is tireless when pursued by the impure of heart, but meek when approached by a virgin. According to Juan Eduardo Cirlo's A Dictionary of Symbols, the unicorn has been an emblem of the sword or the word of the divine. This implies that it is the secret fire of the alchemists, for the word of the divine is akin to fire. Next, we observe a white swan that gently swims over darkened waters. Alchemists pay close attention to the appearance of the white swan, as its emergence over matter signifies the commencement of the whitening stage in the alchemical process. This white stage symbolizes the purification of the work. In the lake, the water lily with its petals spread open, seeking the dawn's light, also catches our eye. The lily beautifully represents the idea that the highest in us emerges from the lowest, 
as its roots are anchored in the murky mud beneath the water's surface. An important symbol not to be overlooked is the lilies of the valley at the feet of our queen. The lily of the valley, a delicate flower thriving in the sun's indirect light, symbolizes the emerging self. It is fragile, unfolding its petals to the light of consciousness, unable to face the sun directly at first. This represents our need to mature and adapt to the lunar reflective stage before enduring the higher intensities of the soul's alchemical fire. We, as the Athenor in our work, are central to this process, depicted by the Athenor in the painting's center. There, the vessel containing our alchemical king and queen suggests that this is a hermetic work, an inner event. The external fire beneath the Athenor heats the vessel, elevating the vibrations within, initiating the alchemical process. This external fire also represents the fire of passion, spiritual aspiration, deep breathing techniques, and spiritual practices. All these elements ignite the soul's inner fire within the vessel. As we continue to explore the scenery, we arrive at the right side of the painting. Here, the brightness of the light of day is evident. We see the king's castle and a chapel on the hill, set against a backdrop of rich and fruitful ground, abundant with vines and grapes. This imagery suggests the action of the solar force. Even the tree is in full bloom, marking the revival of nature in spring, a fitting symbol of our own awakening to glory. The right side of the painting could be seen in sharp contrast to the left, yet it could also be interpreted as part of a harmonious union of opposing forces. This duality is symbolized by the pavement where the beloved couple stands, exchanging wedding vows. The queen, embodying the lunar white alchemical rose, offers herself to the king, represented as the solar red alchemical rose. Their colors signify the white and red stages of the alchemical process. The flooring, checkered, represents the forces of light and darkness in harmonious balance, illustrating the marriage of alchemical fire and water, our alchemical sulfur and mercury. It is said that without water, fire would consume the world, and without fire, water would drown it. Behind the king follows the alchemical red lion, symbolizing the ferocity of the ego. The ego, in its purified, subservient and obedient form to the king, is not problematic. Positively, it represents will, fortitude and the mighty power of the soul. It embodies the I am principle, which as Carl Jung posited, is essential for consciousness. Jung writes, it seems as if the ego has not been produced by nature to follow its own arbitrary impulses to an unlimited extent, but rather to help make real the totality, the whole psyche. It is the ego that serves to light up the entire system, allowing it to become conscious and thus to be realized. The red lion in us must first be conquered and allowed to die and later alchemically resurrected. Anyone who has experienced the dark night of the soul will understand this. This painting was intended to allow the meditative and contemplative mind to realize the beauty of the alchemical process, which is a regeneration of the soul and consciousness and the uplifting of one's ordinary human condition. Alchemy need not be a dark and mysterious journey Though darkness will be encountered, it is to be accepted as the blessed darkness of the soul, within which is found the regenerative secret fire of the alchemists. In the breaking through of unconscious content into consciousness, which is like the dawning of light, we first always enter into a darkness of consciousness. Just as a candle flame loses its brightness when brought from a dark room into the sunlight, the greater light diminishes the light of the ego. Until the assimilation of this most adorable solar fire is achieved, we enter into a lower level of consciousness, 
into a moment of obscurity. A certain part of us as our lesser selves must pass through the psychological dark night of the soul and its corresponding philosophical mortification. Saint John of the Cross said, the endurance of darkness is the preparation for light. We always keep our sacred vigil, for dawn occurs just after the darkest hour, revealing a golden dawn and a resurrection into a higher order of the self. A self, having passed through its alchemical marriage as an entity, becomes one with that which is universal within him or her. The crowning of the Hermetic Child is an extension of the alchemical wedding painting. When placed adjacent to the wedding painting, the scenery of the above painting continues, connecting the branches of the tree between the two. In a clear sky, piercing through a white cloud, we observe the all-seeing eye, representing both the eye of conscience and the consciousness of the divine within us all. This presence is a witness to the miraculous and sacred event unfolding. Two castles stand in the distance, one positioned just left of the king and the other just right of the queen. These represent the palace of the soul and the palace of the Holy Spirit, respectively. A sense of peace pervades the world as the two aspects of consciousness unite their realms. The two doves, acting as messengers and mediators between heaven and earth, embody spirituality and the powers of sublimation and fixation. Perched on a tree branch with roots extending deep into the earth, they appear content, having fulfilled their role in bringing heaven down to earth. To the right of the queen, the peacock is a symbol of totality, its tail blending all colors into unity the harmonious presence of two peacocks side by side signifies the union of opposite forces within the original duality. Spiritual energy and life force are now received from such a unity. In meditation, just before the emergence of the crystalline pure white light of a new and enhanced consciousness, all colors of the dispersed light of consciousness are seen converging. This convergence precedes the appearance of the clear light of the self. In the center of the painting, we see the hermetic child being crowned by the sun and the moon, symbolizing its father and mother, respectively. The hermetic child represents our regenerated soul and consciousness. This inner child is often depicted as the developing light of consciousness. Once this inner light is developed and manifests into inner birth, the child symbolizes the life stage where the old self is transformed and reborn through the alchemical process. The child embodies the inner guiding light of the new spirituality and consciousness that will unfold, becoming the revealed master within. In Hermetic philosophy, this child is referred to as Mercurius and is androgynous, embodying both male and female characteristics. It is likened to a flower, possessing both stamens and pistils and capable of self-generation. The Hermetic Child is also a representation of the Philosopher's Stone. Here the child is being crowned as a mark of spiritual achievement of the highest degree. This signifies that the alchemist's soul has been regenerated through the youthful regenerative force of the alchemical process, leading to a reawakened spirituality and expanded consciousness. The Hermetic Child is the product of the union of the conscious and unconscious aspects of our being, symbolizing a mystical and metaphysical realization of the eternal and the divine within us. As Baudelaire aptly put it, alchemy is the distillation of the eternal from the transient.